Lucas keeps the chase format for 2024, but makes big changes. Plus a look at the Lucas roster for next season. Cooperation wins out for Ohio Sprint Speed Week. Some other recent 410 changes and a non-wing driver flips to winged. Let's go. It's Monday, December 11th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Uh, as of me recording this show, I'm down to just a single 3X hoodie left over in stock over at shop.dirttracker.com. This is not the 3X because I'm not that big of a human being, um, but uh, th this is what they look like. Uh, if you get in uh, in time, I will throw in a sticker with your order. I do still have a few logo shirts left uh, in a few different sizes and the Dirt Tracker row pads uh, plus stickers. If you're grabbing Christmas gifts, order soon so they can get shipped in time. Uh, one of the more polarizing elements of the 2023 season was the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series chase for the championship. It took heat when it was announced at PRI back in 2022, and it really took a beating in the end when Ricky Thornton Jr. didn't win the title after having the most dominant season in series history. Obviously, Hudson O'Neill, your 2023 Lucas champion. When the Lucas schedule was released almost two weeks ago, there was no mention of how they would handle the championship format for 2024. But back on Friday at PRI, we got that announcement. The chase is staying for next season, but with several key differences. The biggest being that the title will no longer be settled in one race, a winner-take-all format like we saw this season, but instead over the final seven races. In 2023, whoever finished the highest at Eldora during the Dirt Track World Championship was going to be the champion. But next year, the final four drivers will battle it out over a seven-race playoff starting at Brownstown in September for the Jackson 100. The other final race stretch includes the night the stars came out at Atomic, the Pittsburgher, the grand finale at East Bay, and then the Dirt Track World Championship at Eldora. There is again a million-dollar point fund with chase bonuses included and $200,000 to the champion. Teams won't get bonus points at the cutoffs, but they will still get those bonus payouts. The four cutoffs are the Show Me 100 at Wheatland in May, the Diamond Nationals at Wheatland in July, the Rumble by the River at Port Royal in August, and the late model Knoxville Nationals in September. Doesn't say uh, anywhere here uh, kind of explicitly uh, in the release or, you know, what I heard from Schwally, uh, but I'm assuming like they did in 2023 that once that final uh, four battle starts, everyone will be put back to zero with all four drivers tied to then start that final seven race stretch. As for the reaction to the news, it's pretty mixed from what I saw. I think there are plenty out there who still don't like any sort of playoff format, but if you didn't like what we saw at Eldora, the, this is a pretty significant step back from that. And I think that has to be the biggest takeaway here. That Eldora finale was absolutely insane, but it's hard to justify someone else walking away with the hardware when a guy like RTJ had the season he did. It was kind of the perfect storm of terribleness for Lucas. Like if RTJ doesn't have the season he had, you had a, you know, a much closer battle to the end, maybe we don't have the same reaction. But when you had the season like RTJ had, and then it turns out this way, this wasn't going to go over like a lead balloon. I appreciate Lucas wanting to up their program and try something different, and I also respect this decision to make the changes. They're saying, we still want this playoff, but we know what happened last year probably wasn't great. And I think the next question for Lucas is, who uh, are going to be their full-time drivers next season? And this is where I think the series could do a lot better. We've been getting the driver announcements on the sprint car side and with the Word of Outlaws late models, but we don't get them in any sort of official capacity from Lucas. I think that's a promotion and marketing miss on their part. As of today, looking around at a few different places, a few different sources, here are the drivers I think we can expect for 2024. Sounds like Tim McCready, Max Blair, Hudson O'Neill, Boom Briggs, Garrett Alberson, Dalton Wilson, and Ross Robinson are back for sure. We don't know yet what plans are for Ricky Thornton Jr., Devin Moran, and Jonathan Davenport. Uh, they were obviously three of the four Chase finalists a year ago. We do know that Brandon Overton told Flow Racing's Kyle McFadden that he wants to do Lucas again, but that they probably need some more sponsorship help to do it right. So we'll see if they're able to secure that and if they again decide to go full-time Lucas. Looking through the rest of the field from 2023, there's chatter that Tyler Erb could go pick and choose, so that would be a loss. We know Earl Pearson Jr. is in search of a new ride after his Jason Papage-owned team shut down here not that long ago. And Spencer Hughes departed PCC and will run the season with JCM Motorsports in a pick-and-choose situation. So that's potentially three losses there. So Lucas right now sits at seven, uh, and if those other three return, that'll get them to 10. From there, we'll see if any other teams make the jump or if any flip from the Outlaws. The way this stuff goes, uh, you usually kind of get a bunch of people that commit, uh, you know, during speed weeks in January and February, uh, and then we'll see if they stick on. But so a lot of time here still for teams to make the decision about whether or not they're going to run Lucas really or the Outlaws. 2024 Lucas season starts January 25th at Golden Isles.
Uh, in Ohio, over the weekend, we did get a very good resolution for the future of Ohio Sprint Speed Week. With the end of the All-Stars via the High Limit acquisition, things be, uh, have been incredibly fluid in Ohio uh, in that sprint car scene over the last several weeks. I've kind of avoided talking about it just because from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, things change. And it's like what you would say one day wouldn't be true the next. The rumors pointed towards two separate speed weeks and possibly two competing regional series with Aaron Fry's fast series already in place and a startup ready to challenge them. That startup series was supposedly hours away from being announced at one point before it ended up dying on the vine. You might remember back to November 18th when Ross Paulson, who was previously an all-star official, posted to Twitter that he was backing out of that project to start the second series. With Speed Week, though, we got great news over the weekend that the entire area was coming together to make this happen as a unified deal. At PRI late last week, I heard rumblings a deal could be imminent, and then Saturday, I got the word that it was done. June, 15th, uh, June 7th through the 15th in 2024, nine races in nine days. You've got Attica, Fremont, Waynesfield, Wayne County, Hilltop, Sharon, Muskegon County, Millstream, and Atomic as those nine dates. The week will be split on the streaming services between Flow Racing and Duravision. And this thing was a group effort by everyone around the state and from both the Flow kind of slash high limit side and the World Racing Group side. I feel like this level of cooperation doesn't happen often in dirt racing, so big kudos to them for getting this deal done. Uh, the Fast Series confirmed everything on Sunday via social media. Uh, the graphic you're looking at on screen is actually their graphic. And I know this wasn't easy, but the sport as a whole cannot grow until we see more of this with tracks and series working together for the betterment of everyone. I think it's important to note, too, the end of the All-Stars and the shifting ground with High Limit has created ripple effects elsewhere in the sprint car ecosystem. Besides Ohio, another example is in the Midwest. The MSTS, which has been a 360 series running at tracks like Jackson Motorplex, Off-Road Speedway, I-90, Park Jefferson, Husets, they're going to expand into 410 racing for 2024. They're going to keep the 360 series but add 410 events to their schedule to capitalize on the number of teams racing 410s in the area. Cody Ledger won the MSTS 360 title in 2023. He topped Brant O'Banion and Micah Slendy. Uh, no word yet on a schedule or other details like purse money or championship payouts or anything like that. So we'll have to keep an eye on what the MSTS decides to do uh, here for the future. And down south, the Short Track Nationals, which had previously been held at the now defunct I-30 Speedway, but are now part of Texarkana 67 Speedway, that's going to become a 410 event for 2024. Posted on the track's Facebook page in recent days, the event will take place November 1st and 2nd and pay $20,000 to the winner. They're hoping to draw some big names to that event, and it's important to point out that that track will host High Limit earlier in the year, and this event will be after the High Limit season ends. So that possibility does exist, as I don't think it conflicts with any other big 410 shows. World Finals isn't until a week later, so you could get some cars uh, from that as well. What this means, though, for the ASCS, I'm not sure. These two dates are still on their schedule, which they released uh, not that long ago. So will this be a dual sprint car weekend, 360s and 410s? Or is the 360 part of this event off? I'm not sure on that one just yet. But this move and the MSTS are two more examples of things changing rapidly in sprint car racing that don't involve the national level specifically. Uh, before we close out, a final news item for you today. One of the bright young stars on the non-wing side of sprint car racing is making the jump to full-time winged competition for 2024. Emerson Axum announced Sunday that he has parted ways with Clawson Marshall Racing and will campaign a winged car out of his family shop for 80 to 100 races next year. There's nothing in a social media post about what that schedule could look like, though. This new deal will be in partnership with Dale Klossmeyer and Scott Petrie. Axum ended the 2023 USAC National Sprint Car season third in the standings with three wins in 38 races and 31 top 10 finishes. He was full-time on the USAC side in both 2022 and 2023, but also made scattered wing starts in between. In 2022, he had several good AFCS runs, including top fives at both Fremont and Attica. And he made seven starts in 2023 with the best finish of third at Benton, Missouri. That was with the Power Eye Wing Series. He also appeared with High Limit at Kokomo, the All-Stars at Atomic, and the Outlaws at Hobstock. Well, that's it for the show today. Make sure to stop by DirtTracker.com for all the latest news from around the sport and check out the streaming schedule. Hope you guys have a great Monday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.